Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the regular open meeting of the Suez Town Council. Uh, it is September 16th, 2013 and I'll call the meeting to order at 2 p.m. And before we jump into it, I'd like to uh, uh, just acknowledge that our Mayor Wells and Councillor Plant are both uh, uh, away from the meeting today uh, attending the UBCM uh, convention in Vancouver right now and uh, hopefully they're uh, uh, pitching our community and gaining all kinds of uh, wonderful amenities for us and uh, I'd like to acknowledge that before we move into the agenda. Uh, first thing on the agenda we need to adopt uh, some minutes um, from the Committee of the Whole uh, meeting of September 3rd 2013 and regular open minutes from September 3rd, 2013. And uh, would there be any comments or errors or omissions on that? Uh, those will be adopted by consensus. Uh, next item, uh, I'm assuming that there are no late items. There's been nothing come forward, thanks. Uh, we have no delegations. And we'll move into uh, agenda item F, uh, water matters. Uh, we have some accounts in the amount of $867.54 uh, for approval. Moved by Councillor Vieira Marrera and seconded by Councillor Laranjo. Any comments on those? And we will adopt those by consensus as well. Thanks. And uh, no correspondence uh, that's been brought up uh, at all? Okay, so we'll move right into uh, our bylaws uh, section. And we have a permissive tax exemption bylaw, uh, 1302, comma 2013, and we'll turn that over to our Director of Financial Services. Thank you. Um, so before Council is permissive tax exemption bylaw 1302-2013. Um, this is for Council to renew their permissive tax exemption bylaw under Section 224 of the Community Charter. Each year Council updates their permissive tax exemption bylaw, which is to be adopted no later than October 31st of each year this tax exemption bylaw would take effect for the 2014 year. This permissive tax exemption bylaw has no changes to the properties being exempted from the 2013 or pardon me 2012 bylaw that was adopted last year. So our implications for our community continuation to provide permissive tax exemptions by updating and renewing the per permissive tax exemption bylaw. Organizationally no changes, budget no changes, Significant dates. Bylaw needs to be adopted no later than October 31st, 2013, as per Section 224 of the Community Charter. And the bylaw needs to be received by BC Assessment Authority no later than November 9th, 2013. Sustainability allows nonprofit organizations to place, um, allows nonprofit organizations and places of public worship to continue to provide services to the Town of Osuyas community. So the options before Council to give first three readings to permissive tax exemption bylaw 1302-2013. Option two, to further amend permissive tax exemption bylaw 1302-2013 and give first three readings. Option three, to delay giving first three readings to permissive tax exemption bylaw 1302-2013. Thank you, Mr. Zackel. And uh, what are Council's wishes? Councillor McCornoff. Yes, thank you. I would like to move uh, option one to give first three readings to permissive tax exemption bylaw 1302. Uh, thank you. And seconder for that, uh, Councillor uh, Ryan. And uh, I think we'll probably be bouncing back and forth on those uh, <laughs> a little bit today uh, with a shortened down version of Council. Uh, any comments uh, towards that motion at all? Councillor McCordoff. Thank you. I would just like to say that uh, when I looked through it, it was just to to check and make sure that there were no changes to the properties being exempted last year, and it looks like it's exactly the same. No, no one else has 
written us a letter uh, asking for exemption? That's correct. So, okay. so basically, the um, property that got included last year was the um, boat trailer parking yes. lot. Um, no other changes than that. Okay, so I, I'm perfectly happy to see this move forward uh, at this stage. Okay, any further comment? Councillor Ryan. Yes, thank you, uh, uh, Acting Mayor Wells, or Acting Mayor uh, <laughs> Rhodes. <laughs> we'll get it together. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's always hard. Um, anyway, I, I, I think that um, I, I would support this. And uh, again, it's, it's a way of um, providing for uh, the... Uh, the organizations that are that are doing uh, good work in our community and especially providing various services uh, to uh, our community members and uh, I, I'm happy to, to be a part of, of giving them some break on the on the uh, property tax okay uh, thank you uh, any further questions or comments at all I think we'll call the question on that uh, all in favor opposed seeing none motion is carried Next item on the agenda would be uh, our business section, and the first one under business is our August uh, income statements, and uh, I'm going to turn that over once again to Director of Financial Services. Thank you. Um, so some information for Council, our August income statements for the Town of Osiris and Sun Bowl Arena. Um, these statements being presented to Council. Um, for the Town of Osiris and Sun Bowl Arena have been reviewed and accurately reflect, or reflect the attached documents. Um, some highlights to the Town of Osiris income statement for August 31st. Um, projecting a surplus in the town, town funds. Um, can't um, ultimately say what it is. It's too early in the year yet, but um, at least we're on the good side of things. Um, I'll just go over all of the um, different categories um, so it gives council a little bit more reflection on that um, taxes real property levy projected to be slightly under budget due to supplementary assessments that we've received and this um, reduction is six hundred and seventy nine dollars and eighty nine cents to date um, what happens is um, after the revised um, assessment role has been created and the town goes through the process of generating the tax notice and, and send it out um, you do have some properties that appeal, have their property taxes appealed and things of that nature um, whereby we receive a supplementary assessment from BC Assessment Authority. When that takes place, we have to recalculate the property owner's um, property tax bill and send them out a revision. So that's where you see a, a discrepancy compared to what um, was originally approved as the budget number. Taxes collected for collected for other governments um, projected to be slightly under budget due to again supplementary assessments of forty eight hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety three cents taxes collected from utilities projected to be slightly under budget due to a decrease in East Link revenues for 2012 and this reduction is nineteen hundred and ten dollars and seventy five cents cemetery operations is projected to be on budget licenses permits and rentals projected to be on budget solid waste management Landfill tipping fees and septage fees are under budget by $71,032.76 at the time of the report. And I'm projecting a budget shortfall of 40000 at this time. We're finding that people aren't hauling as much um, stuff up the landfill or they're recycling more. Um, but our, our revenue projections are still not quite meeting targets. Um, development and building services, um, revenues not coming in as projected, under budget by $23,422 at the time of this report. And I'm projecting that budget revenues will be a shortfall of 40000 for this year. Return on investments, um, or budget surplus of $9,270.56 at the time of this report. And I'm projecting a budget surplus of 24000 Donations are coming in slower than expected. Um, still need donations for the Splash Park to keep this going. Um, that's where that category is. Land and, and equipment sales. This is projected to be on, on budget. Um, each year we sell um, some of our old um, equipment and that's what that budget category is for. Recreation facility revenue was under budget by $6,331.70 at the time of this report. 
This is projected to be on budget. Um, recreation program revenue is over budget by $26,421.37 at the time of this report and projecting an over budget um, of $10,000, so something in the right direction. Unconditional transfers from other governments and conditional transfers from other governments and borrowing transfers from our own funds, these are all projected to be on budget. <coughs> under the general operating expenditures, um, currently general government services is under budget by $74,638.67 at the time of this report and currently we're going to project this to be on budget. Protective services, development services is $19,354.60 under budget at the time of this report. Total protective services is $120,885.71 under budget and I'm projecting um, that the expenditures are going to be under budget by 15000 Transportation services under budget by $126,086.72 at the time of this report, projected to be on budget. Environmental health, under budget by $62,664.99 at the time of this report. This is projected to be under budget by 15000 Public health, under budget by $4,726.17 at the time of this report, and this is projected to be on budget. Community services under budget by $29,631.59 at the time of this report, projected to be on budget. Parks and cultural under budget by $15,055.07 at the time of this report. This is projected to be within budget. Resort municipality projects under budget by $137,097.19 at the time of this report, projected to be on budget. South Okanagan emergency preparedness under budget by $485.12 at the time of this report, projected to be within budget. Transfers of taxes, debts and reserves, um, over budget by $1,120,175.38 at the time of this report. This is projected to be within budget. Most of our transfer taxes happen um, at the property tax deadline and the other ones are transferred as of August 1st, so that's where you see the significant amount of that paid already. Mm -hmm. Capital expenditures, we have the majority of our projects are projected to be within budget at the time of this report. Cottonwood Road project is over budget um, and is being covered from the Gala project and the deferral of the Nighthawk project. Um, Oasis and Nighthawk developer driven road projects are not likely to proceed in 2013. Under the sewer fund utility revenues, um, this is projected to be over budget by 378000 due to the funding received from the RDOS for the capacity portion of the Northwest Sector Sewer Project. Capital revenue is on budget. Expenditures for operating is under budget by $87,542.59 at the time of this report. This is projected to be on budget. Debt charges is projected to be within budget. And capital expenditures, majority of projects to be within budget. Force main upgrading project is over budget and this is being covered by the deferral of the reclaimed water project. Developer driven projects are not likely to proceed in 2013. Under the water fund revenue, uh, water district utility revenue, this is projected to be within budget. Water utility revenue projected to be within budget and capital revenue there is none. Expenditures water district operating is under budget by $9,139.37 at the time of this report. And this is projected to be within budget. Water utility operating, this is a town's um, water operating, is under budget by $182,302.84 at the time of this report and this is projected to be under budget by 50000 Debt charges projected to be 17000 over budget due to early payout of debt. Um, this is covered by the projected surplus in operating. Capital expenditures, majority of projects to be within budget, developer driven projects not likely to proceed in 2013. Moving on to the Sun Bowl Arena, revenues um, are all coming in, you know, within reason of budget. Um, we had one um, emergency expenditure for a compressor and motor replacement of $11,480. And uh, this budget amendment is being processed at the RDOS right now um, to account for that additional expenditure. 
So currently the Sun Bowl Arena is in a surplus situation of $146,598.97 and is projected to be on budget. What happens with the Sun Bowl Arena is we receive all the funding requisition as of August 1st um, for the year for the Sun Bowl Arena. So that's why it's showing in a surplus situation this time. Mm -hmm. And this information is for councils, um, uh, for council to receive and for discussion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Zacklin. You would be looking for a resolution for that? To receive. Right. Um, well, great report, and I think um, when you get financial information, there's a couple of terms that you always like to hear, and that's that, that on budget or surplus, you know, those are always the greatest words, and I see that an awful lot uh, in this particular report. I know it's not uh, for the entire year, but at least we're heading in the right direction, and I just I wanted to make a just a, a quick comment about the landfill uh, uh, that forty thousand dollar figure that looks a little onerous when you look at it, and I always think it's important for for everyone to understand that uh, one of the main purposes of operating uh, you know a successful landfill would be to to make sure that a lot of the landfill product doesn't arrive there uh, at the beginning. And you do that through having good solid recycling programs and, and, and programs that keep organic waste down, which is about 60% of the material in our landfill. And regrettably, the, the, one of the pitfalls of being successful at doing those great things in your community is it reduces the volume of stuff that goes in there and ultimately the revenue. So. Even though it looks like it's kind of a bad thing, it's actually a wonderful thing to hear that about your landfill. Uh, when it's, uh, you know, it has those amounts, the bigger that amount, the more successful your landfill is. So anyway, uh, uh, Council, uh, Councillor McCordoff? Yes, thank you. Uh, I'd just like to, uh, to ask Mr. Zackel about the sewer fund. The, uh, the projected to be over budget, the, it's the Northwest Sewer Project. Can, can I, do I understand that not everybody who is on that leg of the sewer project has paid for that yet? Is that part of the reason or can you explain that a little further? Um, no. Um, basically we had an agreement with the regional district uh, whereby the cost to the benefiting property owners was to be um, between the construction portion, net construction portion and the capital capacity portion was to be eight thousand dollars. Yes. Um, there was a funding formula within our um, this agreement that if the construction cost went over or under a certain threshold, the capacity component would be adjusted either upward or downward. Um, how it worked out is our our calculation came to exactly eight thousand dollars for the, these benefiting property owners, and that three hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars surplus is the capital cost component to these benefiting property owners. The RDOS has paid that entire portion to the town of Osuyas. So, and the RDOS is the ones that w is setting up the, the debt for, for that, as well as if collecting from the, the property owners out in that benefiting area. I haven't seen any correspondence with respect to them requesting those funds from the property owners. Um, I haven't had any bearing on that because that was their thing that they were doing. So the property owners will not expect to have anything from the town of Vesuvius. It will be the RDOS that will contact them for that. That is payment. correct. The only thing that um, the town of Vesuvius is sending out is once they've connected to the sewer system, we send out the utility invoice for the user sure. fees only. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Councillor Ryan. Yes, I did have one question, and I think you, you made an approach to answering it, uh, Mr. Zackel, but on the donations, um, is it fair to assume under our uh, revenue there, is it fair to assume that the majority of that 210000 is, in fact, uh, for the Splash Park? That's correct. I think there's approximately um, 3000 that's memorial benches on there, and other than that, it's all... It's all um, it's all Splash Park. Um, we had budgeted to receive 200000 in donations this year. Or that was our goal. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a lot of uh, in-kind work that had been done for Phase 1 of Splash Park. I don't have those dollar figures yet, 
those would show as revenue figures within this um, aspect. It shows as an expenditure on one side and it shows as a revenue as a donation on the other. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't got those figures yet so that doesn't reflect it within here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. So we're looking for a motion to receive on that. Uh, Councillor Ryan. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Acting Mayor Rhodes. I would be happy to uh, move that we accept, uh, that we receive this uh, report. Yeah. Thank Do you, you and seconder. Mm -hmm. Councillor McCordoff. Um, any further comments? I think we'll call a question. All in favor? And that motion would be carried. Okay, next item on our agenda is our, um, uh, the subject is uh, the migratory bird cull agreement that we've uh, recently been presented with and I'll turn that over to our Director of Corporate Services. Thank you. The town received a migratory bird damage or danger permit from Environment Canada from August 1st, 2013 to December 31st, 2013. Dale Vitalich and Alfred Cole were named nominees or hunters under the permit. Alfred Cole provided the lowest cost to the town to carry out the cull of the birds under the permit. An agreement must be entered into with Mr. Cole to ensure all parties are clear on the expectations. Council will note that there is no, no insurance requirement in the agreement. The cost for Mr. Cole to carry insurance would be expensive and would no doubt be charged back to the town in his total fees. Staff spoke with MIA or the Municipal Insurance Association and they advise that the town can forego the insurance coverage if it wishes and assume the liability on its own. Since Mr. Cole is a seasoned hunter, the risk is low and therefore it is being suggested the council agree to assume the liability in this regard. This may be reconsidered if the program is continued in 2014, which would make the obtaining of insurance over a one year period more likely and more feasible. The agreement covers the cost of $30 per bird to be paid to Mr. Cole and an amount of 52 cents per kilometer mileage to be paid to him to del deliver the birds to Sorco and Oliver, approximately 30 kilometers each way. Implications under the community, it's a reduction in geese to allow more enjoyment of public spaces, organizationally monitoring of the agreement, um, budget dependent upon the number of geese killed, um, and that's limited to 10 per, per week. Uh, significant dates must be completed prior to December 31st, 2013, and sustainability, a reduction of geese will assist in improved lake water quality. For options being presented to Council, that Council approve the agreement with Alfred Cole and that the signatories be authorized to sign, or number two, that the agreement be amended and returned to Council, or number three, that Council not enter into the agreement with Alfred Cole, and the recommendation is for option one. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Council. Councillor McCordoff. Yes, thank you. I would uh, move option one that Council approve the agreement with Alfred Cole and that the signatories be authorized to sign. Uh, thank you. And a seconder, Councillor Ryan. Uh, any comments towards that motion? <coughs> Councillor Ryan. Yes, thank you. Uh, really a, a question, and it was about the, uh, the insurance requirement. I noticed in the uh, actual agreement that we. Uh, Mr. Cole is, is holding us, uh, uh, indemnifying us and saving us harmless. So by having no, um, no mention of him needing insurance, we are in fact assuming that uh, indirectly, uh, I guess, eh? That, that's correct. The indemnity agreement in here is so that if there's any damage to his own property in the process of the agreement in carrying out the services, he's not going to hold us liable. However, if he were to accidentally do damage to somebody else's property on the golf course, desert park, or the airport, that the town's liability will kick in then. Okay, I see. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor McCord. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to point out to people that, in fact, um, uh, Mr. Cole will not be uh, shooting off a gun anywhere close to a residential area. He has three particular locations where he can do this. Um, and that would be the golf course um, after the golfers have finished golfing and the desert park and the airport and he must um, contact the RCMP before he goes out and um, and alert them so that they know where he is and, and when he's going. The other thing I'd like to point out is that under sustainability, the implications, uh, the reduction of geese will assist in improved wa lake water quality and I also think uh, it will Im improve the parks.
because we we have a terrible uh, mess on the on the grass at the parks now too so I'm hoping that it's going to include both uh, thank you uh, great comments uh, Councillor Ryan yes thank you I uh, I just want to add as well that um, a, a, a commendation to the staff for uh, successfully uh, obtaining this kill permit this culling um, this was a subject uh, about three years ago I think of a of a uh, an Asuyas Council resolution to the UBCM as well as to our local um, Southern Ontario Interior uh, Local Government Association and at that time we were asking for both uh, uh, an easier way to obtain these permits from uh, the fish and wildlife uh, people and also to increase the the bag limit in the province and uh, and, and I, I noticed from earlier uh, consideration of this that they had come back to us with a, a lower number and we'd gone back to them and negotiated successfully to increase it to 10 a week. So, uh, I, you know, congratulations to our staff and I think we now have another, uh, if we can use that analogy, another arrow in our quiver to, uh, uh, to deal with this, uh, these beautiful birds which are such pests. <laughs> uh, thank you, Councillor Ryan. Um, I'd also like to uh, maybe just add, uh, I know I ranted about this at our last meeting a little bit, but it has an awful lot to do with that word cull and the perception that it might leave uh, people that, that our mandate is to eradicate this uh, species in our, in our town. And uh, that's so far from the truth. Uh, cull is a, is a word that you can use an, an, under a number of different applications. And our application at this time is you know, it's carefully controlled, qualified people. We're not even going to touch, you know, the eradication of this species in any, in any way, shape, or form. But the one thing that we will do in our community is improve our, our health or, or the opportunity for bad health. Uh, these birds are just nasty. And to use, uh, just to soften it up, to use Councillor uh, Ryan's, you know, they are a beautiful bird. They, uh, you know, they do so much, uh, but you know, the darn things, they just poop a lot and <laughs> it's not healthy. And we've had some That's incidents. Right. I know Mayor Wells talks about this all the time, uh, about young children that have come in contact with this and they've had serious health concerns. That's all it is. We don't have any vendetta against geese or anything like that. We're just trying to control it a little bit doing it the right way with the right people and uh, and that's what it's all about so thanks um, any further comments at all so we'll call the question uh, all in favor and that motion would be carried so we're going to move down uh, the agenda to um, to the report uh, section and the first one would be to pay some bills uh, and our cash requirements are in our general accounts uh, $282,206.37, arena accounts at $303.25 and the payroll accounts at $83,835.32. And would there be any comments or errors or omissions that anybody's noticed in that? And I think we'll adopt those by consensus. <coughs> Next item on the agenda would uh, be carrying on with uh, uh, our building uh, report uh, synopsis for the uh, month of August. And I have that document in front of me and it's also on the screen and uh, you know we've sat here for a lot of months and we've had some really really less than favorable reports and you know it, it took one month to almost <laughs> bring us up to our year-to-date uh, figures from last year and uh, you know if you have a look at it there's a couple of houses <laughs> some renovations going on and just a lot of uh, real good news I mean we're not there but boy what a what a serious improvement and so our uh, year-to-date uh, figures are at $3,058,300, and that's compared to uh, a 2012 year-to-date figure of $3,625,210. And 
And I'm going to say that uh, our last few reports uh, uh, were much less favorable in these, so big improvement. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to ask, uh, uh, do we require a motion to receive on that? Yes. Uh, thanks. So we'll need that motion. Councillor mm -hmm. McCordoff, second by Councillor Ryan. Uh, any mm -hmm. comments? Councillor Ryan. Uh, thank you, uh, Acting Mayor Rhodes. Just uh, a comment that this, these are building permits, but um, happily uh, we've been advised by staff that uh, a couple of development permits have recently been approved as well. So that bodes well for the next few months when the building permits may be coming forward. A uh, great piece of information and uh, pretty solid information too. I think we can look forward to those. Councillor McCordoff? No, I agree. Good, good, good. So we'll call a question on that. All in favor? And that motion would be carried. Next item uh, is a report from uh, the Waterfront Steering Committee. And we have the minutes of a September 5th, 2013 uh, uh, meeting. And uh, I think maybe I'll just take this item. I, I, I did attend this meeting and uh, and I was going to uh, uh, do it in my, my council report opportunity this afternoon, but maybe I'll just go over this a little bit. Uh, my intention is not to read it, but just give you a little bit of a synopsis. And one of the uh, things that's happened over the last little while as we've been developing our arena and building a new washroom and the new parking lot all in the uh, Gyro Beach and our main beach area down there, is that um, we haven't yet had an opportunity to look after the landscaping of those areas. There's a large slope that kind of matches up with the white sands development and just cascading down to the parking lot off of Spartan. And there is some opportunity for landscaping in the new parking lot down below the Owl Pub. And of course, some, uh, some other needs that need to be attended right around the new washroom at uh, Jarrow Park. So the intention would be to uh, uh, look forward to uh, uh, sending out an RFP that asks, is going to ask for you know, expressions of interest from people that are landscaping professionals, experts slash consultants, you know, whatever term that you would like to use on it, to take this project and, and uh, not only develop it, but also manage it and look after and, and ensure that we get the right kind of plantings and, uh, and develop that, uh, that hillside area uh, down below or up above the arena. And, you know, it, it, it often seems that, that, you know, it's a waste of time to do this kind of thing. But in the town of Asuias, we have some very unique uh, opportunities here. Uh, with plantings, you know, we have natural species and we have all kinds of other things that are are very important. And I think over the next uh, uh, couple of months, uh, we're going to look forward to an invasive uh, species bylaw in our community. And those kinds of species were brought into our community because of perhaps lack of uh, good sound knowledge and that type of thing. And this meeting uh, uh, that I'm referring to right now is just an overview of how we're going to follow that up. All of these opportunities, and once these ideas and opinions are given to us, they will all come to council for council approval, and uh, we'll have budget amounts and all of the other particulars with it. And that's kind of the essence of this report. Uh, I'm kind of excited about it because you do so much work down there, and it just doesn't seem to look finished until you actually finish the landscaping and 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 paying a lot of attention to that kind of thing. So. This will be our next uh, step towards that. Uh, thanks for that opportunity, and I think we should have a motion to receive on that as well. Uh, Councillor McCordoff, second by Councillor Ryan. Uh, any comments from Council at all? Councillor McCordoff? Yes, thank you. Uh, I, I just think people have been, uh, uh, pe in the public, have been asking. When uh, we see that the washroom is done, when is the next step down at uh, Gyro Beach? And um, so I think this is a positive. Um, as soon as they see some of the landscaping done, and um, and you know some of the other projects that have been uh, proposed for the next year, I think we will see that after that charrette 
um, things are starting to happen down there and people will be pleased about it. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ryan. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, uh, to see that it's moving along mm -hmm. and uh, when you have uh, all the things done uh, along there and, and there's, there are these little ovals and so on that need landscaping, it, uh, it, it uh, just uh, doesn't, doesn't look finished. So it'll be nice to have, have all those little uh, I's dotted and T's crossed and, and, uh, and plants planted. <laughs> That's right, and uh, and I think a couple of the key things will be, uh, you know, it's a long-term project, and I think we're we are going to do it uh, right. And at the end of the day, just the overall aesthetics of both of those areas will be so much improved through this project, and uh, and hopefully we can do it and be sensitive to our budget as well. So, uh, no further comments. I'll call a question mm -hmm. on that. Uh, all in favor? Opposed, seeing none, that motion would be carried. And this meeting is moving along uh, very rapidly. <laughs> and uh, I'll have to ask, is there a CAO report? Um, no, no, there's not a CAO report. Um, Barry's um, attending the UBCM as well right now for, for the first two days of it. Um, I do know that um, our application for the MMM or MMBC has gone back and been um, accepted. Uh, Barry did that before he left and um, and that Cottonwood um, road reconstruction project is actually under construction right now as we speak. Um, Good. Great. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that whole project, boy, they sure got on it. Uh, we just, uh, I don't think the ink was even dry on uh, signing the contract and uh, and they seem to be working very diligently down there. I've been down there quite a few times and uh, it's looking great. Councillor Ryan. Yes, yes thanks, uh, thanks Councillor Rose. I, just apropos of that, I, I think it's important um, to uh, point out to everyone uh, that um, Jack Pine Lane, which had been closed for safety reasons, is open now so that people can, can go through there and don't have to worry about uh, uh, being, uh, uh, being held back by uh, the construction. And uh, so that I think as of, as of this morning, it was, it was wide open and, and uh, and open for traffic. Well, that's good. Uh, so I think we can move right into our councillor uh, report uh, uh, section here. And uh, first up is Councillor McCordoff. Good, thank you. Um, well, last week I attended the International Joint Commission on Asuyas Lake, um, which was uh, held. Uh, there were people from the United States and from Canada that were there, and the 2013 new order of approval. Uh, was granted in February, so it will um, be in operation now for I think up to 25 years. Um, the lake levels, and there's a whole book written on this, uh, uh, they've, they've taken the lake levels from the last many years and people are quite concerned about it. Um, the maximum was 913 feet above sea level, now it's been brought down to 912.5 but that is just what the Zozal Dam can control. If there is uh, water coming from, because of uh, rapid snow melt or storms from Okanagan Lake, even with the, the gates wide open, um, the Zozal Dam cannot control that any further. So it's a most interesting uh, topic. There were quite a few people that spoke. Uh, it was it, it, it was there was a lot of detail and figures and everything else which I, I I do have in a book but if anybody is concerned about about this and would like to find more information there um, we do have it on the uh, the town of Asui's website you can click onto that and um, and find information about the about the lake level it's really a, a, a terrific meeting of minds the United States and Canada on this and uh, you know, um, it's the way to do to do it to cooperate. So um, Anna Warwick Sears, who is the chair of the no president, I think Mr. Uh, 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 Mayor Wells is the chair. She is the director, I think, of the Okanagan Basin Water Board. She was there and keeps a very close eye on all of these things. Also, people from the BC Minist uh, Ministry of Natural Resources and the U.S. Geological Survey. So if you type in Zozal Dam or you type in um, any of those things, Okanagan Water Board, you could find some information about this and it's really quite interesting. 
Um, it's held once a year. Well, I think uh, this year it was in Asuyas, and next year about this time it's held down in Oroville. Um, yesterday I took part in the Terry Fox run, and that was um, organized by uh, Kyler Nermsu over at the Sonora Centre. Um, there were about 30 to 40 um, runners, bikers, walkers, and even uh, people in, uh, in wheelchairs. Uh, Paul Eisenhut was there in his, in his chair and he did, he did the walk as well. It was very well organized. Thank you to Kyler for doing that. And um, <clears throat> because some of the Asuyas Coyotes were there, I think there was about 40 people. So it was, it was good. You had a choice. I did not do the 10K. Uh, there was a 1, 2, 5, or a 10K, and, uh, and I did the 2K. So that was, that was, uh, that was my effort. Um, <clears throat> on tomorrow night, uh, the September 17th at the Sonora Center, there's going to be a public open house for Haynes Point Provincial Park, the restoration project. And, um, and it's, and it's at, uh, from 4 o'clock till 8 o'clock, and there will be some people there from, the, from the, uh, the Provincial Parks Board, because I know that there are several people in town who um, are questioning what, um, what is being done down there and why certain trees are being cut down. And I'm sure it has to do with uh, invasive species, which is uh, very much in the news these days. So if you are interested um, in what's happening down at Haynes Point Provincial Park, please come to the Sonora Center anytime tomorrow. They'll have, uh, there'll be people there to talk to you and, uh, and I think quite a lot of, uh, of things on, the, on charts for you to have a look at. So that's tomorrow from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And that's my report. Uh, thank you. And uh, I think we'll just move right down the list to Councillor Ryan. Good. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, I'm going to talk about um, this week that we are in, and it is called Democracy Week in Canada. This is the third year that it is being observed, and uh, it was initiated by the United Nations, and they had a day, an international day of democracy on Sunday, yesterday. So in Canada, it's sponsored by Elections Canada, and they have chosen as their theme this year, Connect with Democracy. So the main goal of this, uh, at least in Canada, seems to be to get more people to get out and vote in elections since our voter turnout has been dropping like a stone. For example, last week we had uh, by-elections in the city of Penticton. The uh, voter turnout was 14.65%, uh, so not even 15% of the people voted. Uh, it's almost embarrassing to get elected in an election like that. Uh, in our municipal election here in Asuyas last year, uh, or two years ago, sorry, in 2011, uh, just over, just slightly over 40% of the people turned out. Across BC in that same election for municipalities, less than 30% of the people turned out. And in our provincial election just last May, 52% voter turnout, the lowest voter turnout in the history of this province. So good reason to have a week of democracy. Now what is democracy and why should we, why should we celebrate it? Well, US President Abraham Lincoln, I think, uh, described it well when he said it's government of the people, by the people, and for the people. So basically, it's people, citizens, governing themselves for their mutual benefit. So in other words, it's kind of do-it-yourself government. You don't need kings or queens or emperors or shahs or ayatollahs. But democracy is not an old institution. It's relatively modern. And there's only currently about 60% of the world's 194 countries that are classified as electoral democracies. The rest have other, other kind of uh, ways of being governed. Democracy has not been achieved without a great deal of effort or struggle. And you can't put democracy on autopilot. It doesn't come into being by itself. It doesn't maintain itself. It takes involvement and responsibility of every citizen in order to thrive. Now, in our democracy, we have what's called a representative democracy. Now, this means that we, we elect certain individuals, such as this council, to represent us and to make decisions on our behalf and in the interest, the best interests of our society as a whole. 
We can expect, we should expect our d democratic representatives to be honest, to have integrity, to make decisions that are based on facts, but not on ideology or personal preference or favoritism. They should demonstrate openness to citizen feedback and be good listeners. They should be open and candid in the way they make decisions. They should be willing to admit when they are wrong and make necessary changes. They should serve the public and not their own private or personal interests. So what about citizens in a democracy? What should we expect of them? Well, we should be able to expect that they will take an interest in the political process, that they will become and stay informed, that they'll consider running for elected office or, or, or be, uh, put themselves forward for appointed office or encourage others to do so, that they will vote in each and every election, that they'll communicate with their elected officials and hold them to account, that they'll take advantage of public consultations and requests for comment from governments and and uh, Councillor McCorrell mentioned one tomorrow night uh, where it's basically finding out about, about what uh, the province is doing in the parks. Currently, there are two other uh, uh, such consultations, one on the coming provincial budget, and I haven't heard too much about that, and the other is on changes to the BC liquor laws. And finally, as citizens, when your federal government prorogues parliament, or the provincial government cancels a scheduled sitting of the legislature and decides they're only going to work 36 days in a year, you could complain and tell the PM and the Premier to get our elected representatives back to work. Well, thank you, uh, Councillor Ryan. That was uh, very good. I enjoyed that. And uh, a lot of truth in that. Uh, perhaps maybe that last statement was the best uh, uh, command that anybody could give out. That's great. Thanks. And of course, there'll be no mayor's report tonight. Uh, uh, I'm not sure where I fit on this uh, this particular meeting, but I did have an opportunity to rant about the geese a little bit. So I think at this time we've concluded our business and we'll look for an adjournment uh, motion. Uh, Councillor McCordoff, second Councillor Ryan. Uh, all in favor? We are adjourned.